verify and then filter ipv6 traffic in this micro nugget you and i are going to take a look at first of all using some traditional tools to verify ipv6 connectivity and then we'll take a look at access control list and how to apply them in ipv6 to stop unwanted traffic let's jump in so on a brand new network, how do we verify basic connectivity? Well, in the old days with IEP version four, we'd use really cool tools like ping and trace route. It was fantastic. Well, guess what? Here in the world of IPv6, we can use the same tools. We can use ping and trace route. And in this network, I've got a XP box over here, a Linux box over here. Let's use a few of those tools and let's verify what the IP address is of this XP box. We'll do a trace route from Linux to XP, verify it works, and then we'll take a look at filtering some of the traffic. So let's bring in our, our Linux box and our Windows box. Here's the Windows, and I'll bring them up a little bit high so we can see the topology, and here's the Linux side as well. So on the Windows side, let's find out what his IP address is. So from a command prompt, we can just type in IP config, and that should give us the information there. I'm gonna highlight this so I don't have to have to type it all in. That's the IPv6 address of this box right here. I'll press enter to save that. And let's go ahead and do a trace route from the Linux all the way over. So on the Linux side, there's lots of tools that we could use. Here's a GUI interface. We could use trace route here, put in the IP address, do the trace, and there it gives us the path along the way. So we have the first hop was this guy right here, and the second hop was this guy, and the third. So basically, if you look at the subnets, it went from subnet D to subnet C to subnet B, and then finally the host responded on A. So we've got full connectivity. That's great. Now what? Well, now that we have full connectivity, let's take a look at some of the traffic we might want to stop. What do you mean, Keith, the traffic we might want to stop? Well, imagine this. Imagine that we put this network in place, and we have the acceptable use policy, and everybody's read it, and one of the things it says is that Telnet is never allowed on the network by administrators, or users. We're never going to allow Telnet because it's plain text and the end users probably shouldn't be using it anyway. Then we discover by doing some protocol analysis that somebody on a Linux box installed a server for Telnet and they gave their IP address to the XP guy on the phone and said, hey, try, try Telneting to me. I think I got a Telnet server installed. And now they ex the user is trying to Telnet over. Let's try that. Let's try that and see if Telnet would actually function. So the Linux users made the phone call to the XP user and said, here's my IPv6 address, go ahead and try it. <laughs> so, so let's try it. And I actually put the IP address right here of the Linux box so I wouldn't have to type it all in. So I'll copy that and let's try a Telnet from this Windows machine. So we'll do a Telnet and we'll paste in the IP address. And sure enough, wow, not even a login required. Fantastic. So now this XP box is Telnet to Linux and they've got that Telnet session. And if there was passwords or anything else, all that of course would be in plain text. So how do we stop the user? How do we stop the user from doing that? We can ask them, I suppose, but more likely we'd want to implement some technical controls, specifically an access control list. So our next topic here is filtering the actual traffic. Filter the traffic that we don't want to forward. Somebody once told me a story about a guy carving out an elephant out of a big stone block. And they asked him, what's your secret to carving out an elephant? And he says, "Just I just carve away all the pieces that don't look like an elephant. <laughs> so we're not going to be quite that broad with our angles here. But what we are going to do is we're going to specifically filter traffic if it's Telnet. And let's go ahead and do this. Let's filter traffic if it's sourced from anywhere on this IPv6 subnet. And if it's destined to any IP address, if it's TCP traffic and destined to the well-known port of 23. And we can filter that inbound right here on FA1 slash one. Now, the application of an access list for IPv6 is slightly different than IPv4. So I want you to pay special attention to how it's applied after we create it when we apply it to the interface. Having said that, let's go to the CLI. So we'll bring in Mr. Router right here. We'll take R1 so we can still see it. We'll put the access list right here on FA1 slash one. So to do this, we're gonna go into configuration mode, of course, to start off. And in configuration mode, we're gonna create an IPv6 access control list called no underscore Telnet. Now that's not the secret. Just the name is not gonna stop the Telnet traffic. We're gonna put a couple entries, access control entries into this access list. The first one is gonna say deny TCP traffic if it's sourced from the A subnet and it's destined for any IP address if the destination port 
is equal to port 23, which is the well-known destination port for our good friend Telnet. Now, the second thing we're going to do is permit everything else. And then we're going to apply this to the actual interface. So we go to interface configuration for FA1 slash 1, and we use the command IPv6 traffic filter, the name of the ACL, and the keyword in to say we want to filter and ma match on everything that's trying to come in. So what's going to happen? All new traffic that comes into this interface as of this moment is going to be compared to these two lines in the access list. The first line that says deny it if it's TCP traffic destined for 23, port 23, source from our subnet. If that line doesn't match in the ACL, the second line says permit everything else. So the only thing we're killing is that traffic right there. So how do we test this? Well, let's bring back in our PC and we'll try the telnet again. So we'll hit the up arrow key, we'll try a telnet. That's not, doesn't look like it's working, but we can verify that by going to this ACL and simply using the up arrow key, look at the show access list again, and you can see that our deny statement right here, TCP connection couldn't be established, so it tried a second time, and eventually it's gonna time out, which is what has just happened in the background. So what have we identified in this micro nugget? Two basic things. Number one, to verify basic network connectivity with IPv6, we can still use our old tools like Traceroute. If we want to filter traffic, we simply create access control lists of IPv6, apply them to the interfaces, and by doing so, we can implement our policy. In this case, our policy was just to say no to any telnet traffic source from this subnet going anywhere else in the network. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.